John Schilwachter is the team leader of the Drinking Water Protection Program at the TCEQ. He holds a degree in environmental science from Concordia University in St. Paul, Minnesota, and he was an environmental compliance officer in the military specializing in the operation of RO purification systems. This morning, John will begin with an overview of the groundwater rule. John, good morning and welcome. Thank you, Mike. It's really good to be here today. Um, today in my presentation, I'm going to provide a basic overview of the groundwater rule. And today in my discussion, I'll be talking about the overall purpose, the components, and some of the processes involved in, in deciding what implementation strategy that public water systems should, should consider today. The purpose of the groundwater rule is that it provides increased protection against microbial pathogens in public water systems that, that use groundwater sources. The groundwater regulation or rule applies to all public water systems using groundwater. In Texas, we have about 5,637 systems and 381 public water systems that purchase water from a groundwater source. Uh, public water systems, uh, I'm sorry, public water systems in Texas use 13,406 groundwater sources. And, uh, and of course, the all important compliance date is December 1st of 2009. And here we have just an illustration of the, of the overall purpose of, of the groundwater rule. As I said earlier, it, it does provide increased protection against microbial pathogens. And, and some of these processes involved is that we identify groundwater sources at risk of fecal, of fecal contamination through that with through, uh, sanitary surveys. Those sanitary surveys will or could discover significant deficiencies. Along with that, we have source water monitoring and, of course, if things are discovered, then we would require corrective action. Another big question we get, probably almost on a daily basis, is that does this groundwater rule apply to me? Okay, well here we have another good illustration of, of, of the th three basic things to consider. Number one is the systems that rely on 100% groundwater, also consecutive systems receiving groundwater, and also mixed and surfacing groundwater systems. The exception to this, of course, is that is if the groundwater goes through a treatment or is treated to, to surface water standards. Some of the key provisions of the groundwater rule, as I mentioned earlier, sanitary surveys are a very big part, source water monitoring, uh, of course, corrective actions for significant deficiencies in fecal contamination, and also compliance monitoring. All of these issues, all of these main points will be, will be covered in much more detail further on in the presentations today. Number one was the periodic sanitary surveys, or CCIs as we call them here in Texas. For community water systems, those typically will be done um, every three years unless, unless they meet sp specific uh, performance criteria. Number one was that that system provides full log inactivation of viruses and also would have some type of outstanding performance record. For non-community water systems, uh, the period for sanitary surveys for those systems is every five years. Source water monitoring scenarios, we have two possibilities. Um, first is assessment source water monitoring and the second is triggered source water monitoring. And again, further along in our presentation today, um, other, other individuals will be covering those topics. Compliance monitoring applies to groundwater systems that provide full log treatment of viruses at or before the first customer using inactivation, removal, or some other state approved combination of full log inactivation and removal. But they also must notify us in writing of existing treatment or provide full log treatment as a corrective action. And also, and also beginning December 1st, begin compliance monitoring. Here's another good illustration of, of, the, of the overall aspect of the groundwater rule. Um, and if these will all be covered further in, in detail, but here it, it more or less illustrates how the, 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 uh, the two basic implementation strategies for the groundwater rule. The first of all, it always starts out with TCR monitoring, but along with that, um, it, should they choose a trigger source monitoring plan, they can get um, additional source water monitoring, assessment source water monitoring, and sanitary surveys. Sanitary surveys apply to, to to both sides of this, of this dotted line here. So it's important to note that corrective actions can occur on either side. Triggered source water monitoring applies to groundwater systems that they, which must conduct source water monitoring if they are notified of a TC positive or TCR routine sample 
and are not conducting groundwater compliance monitoring for the full log treatment. Here's an interesting um, implementation timeline. As you all know, the, the rule was, was initially started back in 2006 or earlier. And as we move forward now, we're getting very close to the compliance date of December 1st of 2009. And so we would expect most systems to have already chosen a strategy for compliance of the groundwater rule. Uh, basically, either to choose to go the route of four log or to choose to, to submit a trigger source monitoring plan. And of course, the sanitary surveys will be, um, have already started with something here in Texas. We've, we, uh, we've been doing those all along. Another very good question we get are, are in regard to the groundwater rule is that, does this mean that the total coliform rule goes out the door or do I have to do anything with the, with the total coliform rule? And, it's, and the answer is the TCR stays in place. Basically, they work in, in conjunction with each other. You start out with a total coliform rule and they work together. Samples in a distribution system may indicate a problem in, in your source. Total coliform positive samples under the, under the total coliform rule will trigger a source water monitoring. And here are some interesting acronyms, and I have to assume that everyone today will already know these, but just to kind of spell these out for us today, feel free to look these over. And again, going back to the groundwater compliance dates, of course, uh, and these both have the same date, December 1st, 2009, uh, either the, the choice to go the full log treatment of viruses or submit a trigger source monitoring plan. And of course, these all fall into the same start date. And of course, um, here in Texas, we've been completing or conducting sanitary surveys all along. And so this should not be anything new for water systems to contemplate. Those sanitary surveys or CCIs will continue as they always have. 